I'm glad to see all the ones that uh, came in this morning to be with us. Um, this morning, I want to talk about what happens when you die. Um, this is a question that many people ponder, and there even are a lot of religious pamphlets that are made to, to uh, tell us about what happens when we die. And I would venture to say that probably everyone, or almost everyone, has pondered this question in their life sometime, at least once. So this would be something that we would want to think about. Well, this morning, I want us to consider the benefits of death, but the death uh, that I'm talking about is a different kind of death that you might be thinking about when, when this question is asked. One thing for sure, when someone dies, then they're dead to sin. They no longer have to worry about sin and that kind of death. But this death that I'm talking about, um, too, is a death that you have while you're still alive here on this earth. And this death you can also be sinless in. The death that I'm talking about can only be accomplished by those that are born again in Christ. And I know we already know this, that when we're born again, we become a new creature in Christ. And we have a new person in Christ that is able to not sin. We still have to deal with this old person that we have that is still in this body. So we have two people then. that are, We have the person that was the old person and the new person. So I want to talk about how this new person can accomplish this death that uh, we're required to have when we die with Christ. John 12, 25 says, He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So if you want to keep life eternal, then you have to lose your life in this world. Now, there is also a critical point to note that not only can this old man be put to death, but the new man that, that is created can also die. This is the death that you need to fear. Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now we know who this one is that's able to destroy the body and soul in hell. We were, many of us were once slaves to him. It's Satan himself. Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden because they had eaten of the tree and uh, sinned. But the reason they were expelled was because they would have eaten of the tree of life and lived forever in their sin. So in sin, there is a forfeiture of eternal life. So we must die to sin. This is a first fruit from God, so I want to encourage you to as to some benefits of dying to this world. When we die this death, we no longer worry about things of the world. We are in God's hands. We do not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. We focus on spiritual things, and we don't allow the world to be a distraction to us. We are not concerned what we will wear or eat. We lose our lives here on earth, but we gain eternal life. In Mark 8, uh, 34 through 37, Jesus said, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So have you pondered what will you give in exchange for your soul? Will you die to the flesh now? Is it worth it to you? Have you seen by faith the glorious inheritance that has been reserved for you in heaven? Brethren, have faith in God. It will be worth it all. Amen. Do not let anyone or anything cause you to fall short. And this is one reason why we meet together and we do it so often uh, because we want to be encouragers of one another's faith, to be helpers of one another. Um, we are all in this together, and it's not our desire that any should fall away. When you are joined to Christ, you die to certain things. And some of these things that I'm talking about, we've went over. And some of you that uh, maybe preached or whatever may recognize your uh, points you made because there are notes that I've taken. Um, Jesus' death is a productive death. And when you die in Christ, your death becomes productive. 
What's the devil going to do with the person who is dead to sin? If you're dead to sin, then Satan cannot use you. But God can use a person such as this, and he can use them mightily. So being free from sin, you become the servant of God. As you fellowship with God, it becomes a help or an incentive not to sin. When you are born again, you're given to live in another domain. Romans 6, 7 says, For he that is dead is freed from sin. So when you die, this kind of death that I'm talking about, or when you die physically, the old life is over. So how can you live that life again if you're dead? Should we expect God to continue to abide with us if we die after being born again? Can a man be born a third time? This is the death you should fear. If you do not understand salvation, you are dead, and this is not the good dead. We are knit together with Christ in death, in his death, death to sin and death to the world. Christ is dead to the world. He's not here anymore. And he has made us to sit in heavenly places. We just had a lesson on this the other night. So if, we are in, if you're in heavenly places with Christ, then you are dead to the world. Everything we need to maintain this life in Christ is here for us. Even though we're living in this world, Christ has provided what we need. But some do not avail themselves of these things that the Lord has given us. They leave the places where God has placed them. And this is our place of safety, dead to the world and raised to sit in heavenly places with Christ. This experience of dying with Christ requires grace, and this grace will be demonstrated in the ages to come. Partakers of this grace will be the whole body of Christ. So let us help one another to die while here in this world. Using the world is not touching it. Let us be helpers of one another so that we might finish the race together, that we may glorify our God. Let us sit with Christ this morning in heavenly places and ponder upon the lofty things of God and look with your eyes of faith and see what he has to offer for us this morning.